today. Uh, I, I can see on the screen my tie's all screwed up here. Let me halfway get this straight. Well, I don't know if I'm going the right way or the wrong way, but well, I know I'm going the wrong way now. All right, we'll try that. Maybe that looks a little bit better. Nevertheless, uh, it's uh, February the 7th. Uh, we have lost 31 additional people in West Virginia. I ask for your prayers. I ask for all the respect and honor of these great people and everything. Uh, the great West Virginians we've lost. Now we've lost 5,877 West Virginians. I'll read through those. The 5,847th death, an 87-year-old female from Kanawha County. The 5,848th death, an 89-year-old female from Raleigh County. The 5,849th death, a 65-year-old female from Greenbark County. The 5,850th death, a 69-year-old female from Grant County. The 5,851st death, a 98-year-old male from Wood County. The 5,852nd death, a 92-year-old male from Jefferson County. The 5,853rd death, a 78-year-old male from Jefferson County. The 5,854th death, a 71-year-old female from McDowell County. The 5,855th death, a 77-year-old female from Wayne County. The 5,856th death, a 77-year-old male from Kanawha County. The 5,857th death, a 70-year-old female from Roan County. The 5,858th death, a 67-year-old male from Berkeley County. The 5,859th death, a 68-year-old male from Harrison County. The 5,860th death, a 75-year-old male from Raleigh County. The 5,861st death, a 58-year-old male from Morgan County. The 5,862nd death, an 85-year-old male from Jefferson County. The 5,863rd death, an 85-year-old male from Raleigh County. The 5,864th death, an 88-year-old female from Raleigh County. The 5,865th death, a 74-year-old male from Kanawha County. The 5,866th death, 63-year-old male from Preston County. The 5,867th death, an 83-year-old male from Raleigh County. The 5,868th death, a 78-year-old male from Raleigh County. The 5,869th death, a 59-year-old female from Kanawha County. The 5,870th death, a 74-year-old female from Mingo County. The 5,871st death, a 77-year-old male from Mineral County. The 5,872nd death, an 89-year-old male from Raleigh County. The 5,873rd death, a 72-year-old female from Webster County. The 5,874th death, a 66-year-old male from Kanawha County. The 5,875th death, a 79-year-old female from Nicholas County. The 5,876th death, a 73-year-old male from Raleigh County. And the 5,877th death, a 73-year-old male from Kanawha County. You can see from this, and I just, I'm just going to just check back real quickly. Remember what I told you the other day that the deaths appear to be trending back towards our elderly people, and we've lost so many of our elderly, you know, that really and truly, uh, what that would tell me is if you've had so many of your elderly people that we've lost and so many that we have, that we have vaccinated, right at 90% of them, there's a lot of them that are not getting their booster shot, I don't know how many of these folks did not have their booster shot, but I can tell you in just what I just read today, we had two people that were in their 50s, 159 and I believe 158. Everybody else is 60, 70, 80, and 90 years old. We only had two people of the 31 people that I read here. A 58-year-old was the youngest of all of them. This thing is preying on our older people. If we don't get our booster shots, you know, those people really are in real jeopardy. 
We have 10,000 active cases now. We're down to 1,273 new positive cases. We didn't test hardly any. Our positivity rate, 29.26%. Our cumulative rate is at 8.25. We have almost 450,000 people in West Virginia that have recovered from COVID. We've dropped down under 1,000 now in our hospitals to 986. We still have 214 people in the, in the ICU units and 120 on ventilators. The red counties are still coming down. You know, we now have four green counties, which is awfully, awfully good. And you'll see, and I, I think probably the best time is to, to now show this, these charts and everything, or these graphs that you had, uh, Jordan, and everything, and you'll see it's really easy to see if you'll just uh, look at it and everything. This is West Virginia. And if you'll look at the top line or the bottom line, you'll see the surge that went up, went way up, and you see it moving down, and it moving down pretty aggressively. If you'll show them the U.S. chart, please, Jordan. Do you have that? There you go. That's the U.S. chart, and you'll see the same thing you'll see a very significant drop off in everything. And we're very, very hopeful of both. And so, uh, so it looks like what Dr. Marsh said to us probably a week ago, that we're starting to move in a good direction with all this and let's just stay on top of it and keep fighting it and everything. And I, I just remind our elderly people, our elderly folks, uh, it's your decision. It's your decision not to get that booster shot. It's your decision, but you can tell by the, 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 number or the, the, the numbers on the folks that we're reading, their ages and everything, that those are the people right now that are really, really in harm's way. We want to thank our National Guard in so many ways, but uh, they have 290 Guard members that are deployed in 34 facilities. Great, great work. We, we want to rem remind everybody, if you want to get those four free home test kits and everything. All you got to do is just get a hold of us at uh, covidtest.gov and we'll get them to you. The, you know, your free N95 mask should be available to you right now for every person if you'll go to the pharmacies. Um, from the standpoint of our antibodies, you know, I've told you before about the FDA discontinuing two of them. We still have others. Uh, one of them is uh, two oral pills, and, uh, and 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 you know. So we do have we do have antibodies to combat combat this virus. If you were, if you would just take advantage of the free testing, and and absolutely, if we can, if we can catch this early enough, you know, we'll try to get you those antibodies. They're in semi short supply, but uh, but we do have enough, and 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 I think I think we're moving in a positive direction on that. You know. I, there's no point in going through, I don't have any uh, new updates on the letter that we sent up with, along with the uh, governor of Virginia, you know, Governor Youngkin and, uh, and, and you know, went to the CMS and asking for a waiver in regard to our rural hospitals. Now that waiver will not come from the, in, in, you know, in the, in, from the standpoint of just saying, okay, we'll just allow, you know, or we'll go back to where you don't have to be vaccinated at all. It won't come that way. We will get an extension of time or some level of consideration, you know, that the formula that they use may be, may be tweaked just a little bit or something like that. But I anything we can get to where we can keep these people on the job, we need them desperately. Okay, I've told you about, you know, if you feel any conditions whatsoever unusual and you're 65 and above, absolutely get tested, please. And we do have antibodies that can help you, and, uh, but get tested. You know, I encourage you about wearing your mask if you're in a crowd, you know, people that you don't know, you're indoors, you're 65 and older, and you've got symptoms of, uh, symptoms of some kind, you know, or, or pre-existing conditions, rather, you know whether it be heart, you know, lungs, could be diabetes, weight, and, you know, anything. If you have those situations, you may really ought to consider wearing that mask. Over and over, I tell you about the booster shots. It's like a broken record, I know, but 
I, you know, I, I, I've said it a million times. I don't get it. I don't get how you can make a decision to get vaccinated two different times and absolutely be told over and over and over, they're not doing you any good now and really and truly wait on the booster shot, especially if you're over 65 and absolutely put it on pause and not take it. I do not get it at all because it will absolutely protect you beyond belief. And on, we, we know that. We absolutely know that just as clearly as, as anything in the world. But just if you'll just think about it, just, just think about just this. The number of folks that are dying, the number of folks that are hospitalized, this may not prevent you from getting it, but it will absolutely help you in every way to prevent you from maybe going to the hospital or absolutely dying. So uh, good numbers on one thing here. We, uh, we have now reached 71%. You know, we were at like 70.3 and 70.4, and finally we made it to 70.9. Now we're at 71% of the 18 and older that have had one shot. We're at 82.5 on the 50 and older, and we're at 89.8 now on our 65 and older, and that's good. Uh, still not as fast as we want it to be, but we're still penetrating. We're still absolutely getting people along the way. You know, from the standpoint of uh, your COVID-19 uh, vaccine info line, it's all up on our website. Free testing, take advantage. We always thank Frith and Walgreens for all that they've done. The long-term care facilities, 161 outbreaks now, one in the church community still in Nicholas County. Uh, you know, uh, corrections still have 919 inmate cases at 25 facilities and 234 staff cases. I remind you about the rental program and everything from the standpoint, if you're a renter or landlord, take advantage of this. For crying out loud, call us. We can probably put some real money in your pocket if you can qualify. I remind you about giving blood. It's so, so, so important and everything and desperately important at this time. Now, I asked you for your condolences for a, for a gentleman that uh, I didn't know very well, but I knew him and everything. He was a Kanawha County Commissioner. He was a delegate. He, you know, he just, uh, you know, he, he, he we, we'll miss this man. This was a kind man. He's Hoppy Shores, and uh, he served 42 years as a commissioner in Kanawha County. And uh, he was elected in 1966 and served 42 years. You know, uh, it, it's, it's just amazing. That's all there is to it. You know, uh, Hoppy was, I think, 92, 91 years old. I'm, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss that. But uh, the biggest thing, I mean, he, of course, he was elected in 1986 to the House of Delegates and served till 1990. You know, he, he just, the, the, the most profound thing that I think could ever be said about somebody we lost was he was a good man, a kind man, a man really and truly, really and truly that uh, served this incredible state in many ways. But when you step back and just think, you know, as you go, if people could look on you as, a good person, a person that was kind in his words or her words, you know, a person that reached out and tried to serve and tried to help. That's what this man did. I don't know how it could be any better. You know, so we'll be, uh, Kathy and I will surely be offering our prayers. And uh, as I ask all West Virginians to join in that, and we'll be issuing a proclamation to lower the flags to half staff on the day of his funeral. This one, the la and, and Hoppy was 92 years old. They've, uh, they've sent me a little note, he was 92. Uh, this one right here, you know, we celebrate an incredible life that Hoppy gave us and, and all the incredible stuff that he did. This one right here is really sad too. And it takes on a completely different dimension to me because I just think, you know, how how terrible this is because this life is snuffed out and gone and gone so early. We lost another correctional officer. This is our fourth, I think. 
He's, it's a 31-year-old, a 31-year-old man. He, he, his name, Corporal Christopher Scarberry. He, 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 he was working at the Western Regional Jail in Cabell County and had been, been there since 2018. He was hospitalized with this virus in December, and he died on Sunday. I'm sure he fought an incredible fight, but really and truly, 31 years old. He's survived by his wife and three stepchildren. Absolutely, Kathy and I in every way offer up our prayers, our condolences to the family and all those. And there's no question that from, from the very, very beginning, our correctional officers did run to the fire, did they not? They came to work all the time. They absolutely took care of our inmates and they absolutely took care of their families and all kinds of people at the same time. I just hate it. I, you know, I mean, I, I hate to, to be emotional about it, but I just think about, about my kids. I think this is just a kid. I mean, for crying out loud, with all kinds of life in front of him, we'll surely miss him. Christopher, I'll promise you we won't forget you, and absolutely I, I ask everybody to remember him in your prayers, your thoughts, and absolutely all of his loved ones, especially these kids and this wonderful wife. So nevertheless, uh, I hate this. But that's all I got. All right, thank you, Governor. Let's now go to Dr. Clay Marsh, our coronavirus czar. Well, good morning. And following up with what the governor has said, I think it is important to note both in our country and in our state, it does look like the number of new cases now have definitely started on the decline. Again, we are a bit behind the rest of the country, particularly the urban parts of the country maybe as much as three weeks behind or so, two to three weeks. Um, we know that our hospitalizations, which still are hanging in that 990 to, uh, to 1,000 range, which is something for us to still pay attention to. But, um, but we do know that nationally, the hospitalizations are going down. The U.S. had the unfortunate... Um, uh, finding of uh, passing 900,000 deaths from COVID-19. And at an average daily number, even today, versus the uh, Delta surge, we see more people dying on average each day still from the Omicron variant than we did from the Delta variant. And given the timing of the cases going down, the hospitalizations and lagging a little bit and going down, and then the deaths being the last thing to, to peak and then go down. We know that we are in a really important moment for West Virginia. Really important data just came out of Israel that basically compared people who got two doses of the COVID uh, vaccine. And again, remember Israel is mostly a country that relies on Pfizer vaccines as the mRNA vaccine of choice. So comparing people that got two doses versus people that got three doses. And what they found was that at all ages, the three doses, the booster dose was really, really important and reduced the risk of having COVID infections significantly by about 14 times or so. And also importantly, protected people, particularly people over 60 years old of getting severe illness, hospitalization. And that was by about 17 times. And, and reduce the risk of death again about 14, 15 times. And again, this is people that got two doses versus that got two doses plus a booster. So it does underscore the importance of give it, getting that booster. And as we've talked about many times, the vaccines lose some of their potency after about four to six months of the first two doses. And that's the reason why getting that booster dose um, after five months after your initial vaccines with either Pfizer or Moderna, or two months after your initial vaccine with, um, with Johnson & Johnson are really, really important. 
And as we go forward, more and more data is coming out about the impact of uh, vaccination rates in the United States. And we now are the country of all the westernized, richer countries. We lead the world in deaths from COVID-19 and half of our deaths have occurred after the vaccines have become available. So we know very well that getting vaccinated, getting boosted is really important to reduce hospitalizations and importantly, save lives. And given the fact that we think we're entering now this hospitalization and death component of the surge from the Omicron variant, it is really important to take advantage of this time frame to get boosted if you haven't been boosted. And please, particularly if you're over 50 years old, if you haven't been vaccinated, get vaccinated immediately. But if you've been vaccinated and it's five months since that last vaccine, please consider getting boosted. Really important right now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marsh. Next to Dr. Ainam Jada, state health officer. Good morning. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that while we do encourage all our elderly population to get their vaccine and boosters, as Dr. Marsh mentioned, we do want to remind everyone if you're five years and older to get your vaccine. Our children in West Virginia are very important. They are the future of West Virginia. And if your children have not gotten, gotten their vaccines to get their vaccine. And also we have noticed that the boosters have not been People have not gotten their boosters as um, we would like, and that a lot of people, if they have gotten COVID, um, they may think that they do not need to get their booster, but um, you still need to get your booster dose, even if you have gotten COVID. Um, we do know that it is important. So even if you have gotten your two doses of your COVID vaccine, or if you've had gotten COVID, you still need to go out and get your booster dose. It is very important in order to um, remain out of the hospital. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you, Doctor. Secretary Bill Crouch with the DHHR is also joining us today and is available for questions. Retired Major General Jim Hoyer had a prior engagement and will rejoin us on Wednesday. We'll now go to questions from members of the media. The first today from Kenny Bass with WCHS and Fox 11. Thank you for taking my question. I will note that with the new total of deaths we have, that number would be the 28th largest city or census area in West Virginia. To put it into some context, it just passed Princeton. So more than the entire population of Princeton. A couple of quick questions. One, where are we on the letter uh, asking for the fourth booster from uh, the government? I know that uh, we hadn't heard much. Have we heard anything? And two, to Dr. Marsh, uh, along those lines, what would be the medical reasons for not having a fourth booster shot? We just don't know what it would do, long-term impact. No studies have been done. What are the hurdles in the way? And secondly, to Dr. Marsh, when you say you're five months out of your vaccine, you should get your booster shot. Well, I'm now seven months out of my booster shot. So am I just good luck? And if you get it, hope you don't die, fat guy. Or I mean, is there some <laughs> dispensation being thought that a fourth booster shot is the answer? Or we just finish the third and you roll the dice? Thank you. Dr. Marsh, please. Thank you, Governor. And, and thank you, Kenny. So as we start to look at the data uh, using an additional booster shot, really most of that data comes from Israel. And Israel has been a world leader in really pushing the vaccines along with working with Pfizer, uh, pushing the vaccines and really informing the rest of the world, the benefits and, and the challenges. And what we found from Israel is that offering a fourth vaccine uh, particularly to people over 60 years old. I think they've opened it up now to all ages. And they are timing that four months after the, the previous uh, vaccine. So this is four doses, and we would call that the original two dose, then a booster, and now another booster dose. They found about a 50% reduction in new infections. Uh, um, they tested children mainly. Um, and they um, also found a threefold decrease in their elder population over 60 in hospitalizations. So we do believe that there is a benefit there. And as you said, Kenny, our concern is the loss of potency that we can see from the vaccines after a four to six month period of time. What the 
what data coming from other places, including the U.S., is that having a booster dose, uh, the three doses, if you took the two, first two, Moderna or Pfizer, having that next dose that is now five months after the first two doses, still is a very significant protector of, uh, uh, against hospitalization and death. 99% protective against death, about 96% protective against hospitalization. What the real question and what we asked the, the White House and the, and the FDA CDC to consider would be to look to understand in a different population in America, um, and West Virginia represents an older, more chronically ill population, whether or not we wouldn't have seen an increase in the impact and the benefit of uh, being able to give that additional booster four months after the last shot. Uh, to my understanding uh, or information, we have not really received much of a response. Uh, we uh, do believe that would have some benefit, but currently there is no FDA or CDC guidance to get that next vaccine. And I think the reason why is because there is, is data suggesting the benefits still of the, of the third dose, the first booster dose, that may have more perpetuating uh, impact. And that is something that particularly as we see more people who are breaking through, uh, you know, from vaccination, both in getting infected, and even if you look at our DHHR data, which we're following up, you know, if we look at the hospitalizations, ICU admissions, or ventilated patients, we're seeing a higher percent of those people uh, being vaccinated. We don't know if they've been all boosted or not. We're trying to find that out. And we look at the vaccine breakthrough deaths, we can see these are in older West Virginians, over 61. So Kenny, good question. We don't have any information back as far as I know, but I do think that there is a rationale to still consider that uh, regimen, uh, adding another booster for people, particularly over 50 years old who are greater than four months out from their last boost. All right, thank you, Kenny. Next, we'll go to Paul Mullen with WCBC. Good morning, everybody. Governor, last time you busted my chops when I admitted that I got a Johnson & Johnson vaccine instead of the other two, and uh, I, I'm going to ask the question, kind of taken off on Kenny saying that he's a fat guy. Well, maybe I'm a moron uh, for doing that. But I, 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 I want to know, I, I did have the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I did consider the booster. I didn't get the booster because I said, boy, if Johnson & Johnson only gave me two months, if I get the booster, is it going to give me another two months? And what, what, what real good is that? And by the time they make up their mind uh, whether I need a fourth booster, how uh, long am I going to be unprotected then? So anyhow, I wound up with COVID in December, and uh, I did get the antibody treatment, and I did stay out of the hospital. Um, but I, I, I'm considering now whether I should just start the whole process over and go after a Moderna or a Pfizer vaccine after I get through the 90 days after uh, my COVID infection. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to get some medical advice from our panel here on what I should do. I mean, I, I'm not happy with the two-month thing. I, I'd like to go and get uh, start the process over again, but am I allowed to do that? Is there any risk at going back to the beginning and saying, hey, I'd like to go with Moderna or uh, Pfizer? Um, so I throw myself on the mercy of the medical court. Well, Paul, let me let me say this. You know, uh, you know, I, I think you're anything, anything but a moron. You're really a smart guy, and uh, and and a good, good, good man, and a good, good friend. And uh, but but I I, I want to say this to you too. I love your question because, to tell you the truth, there's a lot of people in the same boat you're in. A lot of people are confused, and uh, and and that's why we keep. We keep getting more and more and more people across the finish line. If all we had was those that were out there that said, no way, no way, no matter what, no way, then we wouldn't see this steady, steady improvement. And, uh, and so there's a lot of people that have a lot of questions and a lot of concerns. And, and I'm going to pass now to, uh, you know, I guess Dr. Amjad and, and, and Dr. Marsh and let them 
give you their very, very best advice. Uh, and, uh, but I, I love your question because it, it's the kind of questions that we want where we can clarify stuff for people and make, make, you know, give people a pathway. So uh, Dr. Marsh or Dr. Amjad, y'all please. Ryan, do you want to start and I'll follow or do you want me to start? You go ahead, Clay, because I think this is a little bit, um, it's a different answer, I think, now than what we used to give out. Yeah, so Paul, thank you for your question and thank you, Governor. So Paul, the fact that you got Johnson & Johnson when it first came out was a very reasonable decision and one that you know all of the recommending bodies, oversight bodies, FDA, CDC, certainly were in favor of. The fact that you have not gotten your booster shot, but you did get a COVID infection was again, um, activation of your immune system. And the fact that you got monoclonal antibodies and, and are better is really great news. If I were you at the time uh, that you would feel comfortable and you could wait the three months as was originally suggested for the monoclonal antibodies, or to me, you know, at this point, since you're over a month from that treatment, you know, you could consider getting a, another shot. Um, and that shot should further activate your immune system. What we've seen, particularly in Europe, um, from uh, folks who did get Johnson & Johnson or an affiliate uh, vaccine from AstraZeneca, both with the same kind of technology, that the, the persistence of benefit, particularly to hospitalizations and severe disease, was good if you got the appropriate boosting dose. So I, instead of starting over, I think you would be fine, you know, at whatever time you are comfortable and your healthcare provider to go ahead and get another shot. I would personally um, choose Moderna based on the data that we have seen with Johnson & Johnson Boost, but I would either get a Moderna or a Pfizer vaccine. And I think you could get it now or you could wait for the three months after your monoclonal antibody treatment. Uh, either should be uh, fine and should really continue to activate your immune system since the infection likely reminded your immune system. So this will be an, this will be an additional empowerment of the immune system, which I think should serve you fine. So I don't think you need to start over. I don't know if you have any other comments. No, I, I think what's happening at, out in the medical community is that a lot of physicians are telling patients to wait the full three months after a COVID infection or getting the monoclonal antibodies. And, and I don't think you, you need to wait. And I think that's what we want people to know is that you don't have to wait the full three months. You can, but we're seeing a lot of breakthrough infections out there because everyone's body is different. Um, and I think that's what we need to remind people is that with these different um, variants out there, some people are getting breakthrough infections. So you don't need to wait the full three months after COVID. Um, whether you've gotten antibodies or a COVID infection, if if you're able to go ahead and get the vaccine, I, we would rec recommend it. As, is what I would say. I think that's what the confusion is out there in the public and the medical community. Thanks. All right, thank you, Paul. Next, we'll go to Charles Young with WV News. Hi, this is Charles Young with WV News. Um, I was hoping to get a little bit of an update about the response at our long-term uh, care facilities. I know the governor said we have uh, 161 outbreaks um, that we're dealing with. So I was just wondering, what is that like on a day-to-day -day basis? I know, you know, in the earliest days of the pandemic, we were dispatching the National Guard from outbreak to outbreak, doing deep cleaning. I was just wondering what the day-to-day -day is like now. Thank you. Okay, Krauss, why don't you take this, please, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. And thank you, Charles. Uh, we've seen uh, a reduction in the number of individuals who are, uh, who are positive right now. But uh, if you look at the dashboard, we still have 676 active uh, out, uh, staff uh, right now who, uh, who are infected. We have 234 uh, uh, patients there. And as Clay's talked about, uh, and the governor's talked about. We're seeing more and more uh, individuals who are elderly who are having breakthrough cases. We're seeing more in, in uh, being admitted to the hospital right now, which is very concerning. Um, but overall, 
this, this, these vaccines protect individuals and they protect people. So the differences from early, early on, I think, are kind of the same everywhere, whether it's acute care or long-term care. Everybody's gotten a little more comfortable in dealing with this virus, and uh, but we're everyone's being very careful. We've got uh, more individuals vaccinated, more staff vaccinated uh, at the nursing homes. As you know, we were the first governor charged on this and made sure that, that uh, we made the, uh, our elderly population the priority in West Virginia. We were the first in the country to get them vaccinated. We're still trying to, to make sure that those folks are safe. And uh, I want to say uh, in terms of the staff out there, the, the, the staff of the nursing homes, Gosh, these folks are heroes. They, they, they go into those buildings every day and every day, and uh, they, they just do an extraordinary job. We have a weekly meeting with the long-term care folks where we uh, discuss the, the status of the, of the facilities and where they are. We make sure they have enough test kits. Uh, we, we provide those uh, from the state directly. We make sure they have enough uh, monoclonal antibodies or, or access to antivirals. Uh, so we have a great partnership and a great relationship there. So overall, the change has been uh, relaxing a little bit to deal with this uh, with this virus, but also staying on our toes and make sure, making sure people are safe. All right, thank you, Charles. Next to Evan Bevins with Ogden Newspapers. Uh, thank you. Just uh, wanted to ask, as we see the active case numbers going down, thankfully, um, is there concern that that people may, you know, re relax again, or, or should people be relaxing? I guess what's your advice to people as to what what phase we're in now? What would you say to people as they see the numbers going down um, in terms of vaccinations, masking, and precautions? Thank you. Please. Who do you want, Governor? No, Dr. Marsh, please. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Evan. So we would certainly recommend for our vulnerable West Virginians to still be very careful. Omicron, the RT value in West Virginia, the reproductive value, the spread has now been below one for the last five to seven days, which is great. The new cases are starting to reduce, but we know that still people are getting infected with the Omicron variant, which is incredibly infectious. And people are getting sick, and the governor can testify to the fact that this is not just a benign, don't worry about it kind of infection if you get it. And so particularly for our West Virginians over 50 years old, over 65 years old, you know, please get your booster. That is the most important thing you can do to protect yourself if you haven't gotten it yet. And only about 57 or 58% of our over 65-year-olds have had a boost dose and only about 52% of our eligible over 50 year olds have had a boost dose. And if you're going out, particularly indoor environments, wear a high quality mask and we would recommend either an N95 mask that has that NIOSH, N-I-O-S-H approval on the side or a KN95 mask that would have the stamping of GB2929 dash and then it would have 2019, which is the most recent year that that's been upgraded. So make sure you have good face masks that have been verified as to their um, authenticity. Uh, but this is no time to stop being thoughtful and careful, particularly for the vulnerable age group. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Evan. Governor, I'll turn it back to you. Well, I'll start and we're going to work backwards here and everything. You know, Dr. Marsh said that the governor would testify that this is, has not just been, a, you know, a benign nothing. Uh, you know, if you, if you do get this and you're, you know, older than 50 or whatever it may be, you can, you can, you can bet on that. From my standpoint, uh, it was anything but just easy stuff. You know, for a couple of days, it was bad. It was really bad. You know, and, uh, you know, it, I, I never thought, you know, that it was life threatening because I really had a lot of trust and faith in the vaccines and the booster that I already had, but, uh, but it wasn't any fun. And I, I just can't imagine, I can't imagine, you know, how, uh, how people feel laying in the hospital or whatever and gasping for breath, you know, just, uh, and so. Please take heed to all these real superstar experts that we have and, and the good stuff that they're telling you. 
you know, I, I think it is, it, is, it is significant that we think about just for a second that uh, our nation's lost in excess of 900,000 people. And, uh, and, and you know, we, we do celebrate the fact that this surge that we're in right now, the curve indicates, and I, and I underline indicates, that, that, that we're really now starting to move in a better direction. And that's really good, you know. I think it's really important to note what Kenny Bass said. Kenny, I think, said that now that we have lost 5,877 people, that is equivalent to the 27th largest city that we have in West Virginia if you lost everybody there, if everybody died. That surpassed Princeton, West Virginia. If every single person in Princeton, West Virginia died, I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine the magnitude of that number? The magnitude of 5,877 people. It's really, it's just, uh, it's just a lot, a lot, a lot of great West Virginians we've lost, and it is really sad. You know, I'm sure that you picked up on Dr. Marsh's, you know, comments about a fourth dose. You know, all we can do is follow the science. All we can do is follow the knowledge that comes to us from all over the globe. Israel has really been a leader. There's no question in all this. And they've moved forward with their fourth dose, and they have, they've seen incredible results from the standpoint of the fourth dose. You know, especially on people 50 and above. And so in trying to protect those people and trying to do what's right for those people and everything, we sent up a request, you know, for permission and or a waiver to be able to give that fourth dose. And uh, we, we still, I mean, you know, you know how Washington is, everybody. It's just, uh, it's a shame. But we, we still get, uh, you know, just lip service and we don't we don't get answers and so uh, all we can do is continue to try for you and that's what we're going to continue to do but nevertheless uh, I ask that you'll remember Hoppy Shores I ask that you'll remember an incredible 31 year old that we lost from corrections and uh, I think his name was uh, Christopher Scarberry and uh, I want to make sure yes that's right and nevertheless but uh, I ask that you'll absolutely remember all these 5,877 folks. So nevertheless, that's all I've got. We're going to get through this, West Virginia. One way or another, we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it well. So thank you so much.